everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had another busy week of racing with 10 drivers seeing action ranging from quarter midgets all the way up to the NASCAR Cup Series. So let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo was at the Tricky Triangle Pocono Raceway in his number 38 Death Wish Coffee Ford Mustang for twin races, one on Saturday and another one on Sunday. On Saturday, Anthony started 34th, had great speed in the car, but on lap 61 was taken into the wall by another competitor. The Front Row Motorsports team got the car repaired, but was only able to salvage a 26th place finish, but they did finish on the lead lap. Let's check in with Anthony for a race one recap. Well, really frustrating first race here at Pocono Raceway. Got caught up in a wreck in stage two. Everybody at Front Row Motorsports worked really hard to keep myself and my Death Wish Coffee Ford Mustang out there. We're gonna work really hard overnight to uh, get the car back together and go out there and race. We may have to roll out of backup, so we'll see. Uh, but appreciate the hard work for everyone. Ended up 26th. We'll uh, go to work and try to make the most out of tomorrow so we can have a better day. Now on to Sunday. Anthony had to go to a backup car but bad luck struck early when the car got loose going over the bumps and the tunnel turn and he hit the wall cutting down a tire on lap two. Here's what Anthony had to say after the race. Cut a tire on lap two somehow going in the tunnel turn and pounded the fence. Uh, that ended our day. We were able to ride, ride around and lock some laps and get some points by finishing the race. But uh, obviously we're taking out of contention after that. So I hate that, especially after the guys thrashing overnight to uh, prepare another Death Wish Coffee Ford Mustang for me. But everyone worked so hard. Definitely uh, not a great weekend here at Pocono Raceway, but we're excited for Road America next week. Should be a lot of fun. Thank you all for the support as always. Uh, Sauce Mafia, huge presence here in the Northeast. I love it. Up next for Anthony, back to the road course at Road America on July 4th. Sheldon Creed was also at Pocono Raceway in his number two GMS Racing Chaos for Kindness Chevrolet. Sheldon started 10th and quickly made his march towards the front and was setting in third by lap five. Sheldon finished third at the end of stage one and took the lead on lap 25. Sheldon ran in third for most of the final stage, eventually bringing home a third place finish. Up next for Sheldon, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series in the dirt at Iowa's famed Knoxville Raceway on Friday, July 9th. You don't want to miss that one. Connor Mozak was at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course for round five of the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli TA2 race on Saturday in his number 28 Nick Taylor Interstate Foam and Supply Chevrolet Camaro. Connor started eighth and finished on the podium for the first time this season in a series points race with a third place finish. Up next for Connor, Trans Am at Road America on July 1st through the 3rd. Jesse Love was rained out at Dells Raceway Park, so the Wimmer Motorsports team made the trip to Slinger Speedway to get some valuable track time for the upcoming Slinger Nationals on July 6th. And that decision paid off big time. Jesse made his debut by qualifying six, started on the pole with the invert, and led all 75 laps, parking the Mobile One Toyota Camry in Victory Lane. Winning at Slinger is on everybody's bucket list if you are a super late model driver. Up next for Jesse, Arkham Menard Series West at Irwindale Speedway on July 3rd, then back to Slinger Speedway for the Nationals on July 6th. Cassidy Hines had a good day in her number 88 Friends of Jackman Foundation SRL Pro Late Model competing at Kern County Raceway Park for the very first time. Cassidy qualified seventh and brought home a top 10 finish in seventh. Let's get a post-race update from Cassidy. Hey everyone, I raced my Nick Clara Motorsports Pro Late Model at Kern County Raceway for my first Pro SRL race and I think we had a pretty good night of racing. I qualified seventh, which put me in the redraw, so we drew a six, which put me on the outside third row. And after a few laps, the tires started getting really hot, and the tire, the left 
rear tire actually shrunk on me so it made the car really loose for the main um i did end up finishing ninth in that race and after a few drivers went through tech i ended up finishing seventh so i think we had a pretty good night of racing i learned a lot i was on a really big track it was a really fast track and i felt like we learned a lot with that track and i can't wait to go back I would like to thank all of my sponsors, Frontier Restoration, Nate Clower Motorsports for all of their help this weekend, Driven Race Gear, Fort Worth Screen Printing, LL Acousticals, Commit to Fitness, Race Face Brand Development, and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Up next for Cassidy, SRL Pro Light Models at Irwindale Speedway on July 10th. Grant Thompson was on the West Coast for the very first time this year competing in the SRL Pro Late Model Series at Kern Raceway Park with Nate Clower Motorsports. Grant qualified 10th and finished his SRL debut in 6th. Let's check in with Grant for an update. What's going on guys? Grant here. So, uh, it's the next day. We uh, just, did, uh, just did my first race at Kern Canadian Raceway Park in the number 54. Nate Clower Motorsports Pro Light model, and uh, you know, fun fact about that car, you know, it was, it was, this was the first time it was run as a Pro Light model. You know, it was run as a Super Light model last year, so I think Tony Caputo and Mike Nate, the whole Nate Clower Motorsports team, did a really good job of getting that car, you know, ready for this for this race. And you know, we didn't have any data on the car, we didn't know how it was going to do, but uh, you know, we worked through it as the weekend went on, and uh, and you know, improved and, and you know, made speed throughout the weekend. But um, yeah. You know, move on, moving on to the race. We uh, we were all right in practice, pretty about P60, P8, pretty much all, all, all the practice all throughout the week. But uh, qualified tenth. You know, didn't didn't do as well as I thought we would. I I wanted to be you know towards the top, you know, the top five, uh, half of the field. But um, you know, it's okay. We uh, we we you know we shook it off and you know we felt confident about it. And uh, you know, started on the outside lane. I took the green and you know the, the field kind of got stacked up and uh, we we were able to to gain you know some positions once once that restart got past us but uh had a good race um, it was a tough track to get the hang of in the beginning you know real fast and you know it's kind of like racing a bandolero on like Daytona you know it's a momentum track you can't really check up a whole lot and you just gotta you have to keep your roll speed up and that was that was a hard thing for us to do we struggled a little bit with that in practice but uh you know. Did really well in the race. We came up P6, so a pretty solid finish for my first time here. But when we come back in October, we're going to be better. We're going to improve, you know, get some notes on the car. Uh, Tony Caputo, you know, John Mankey, Anthony, just everybody that helps out on that car did a really good job. And uh, we'll, we'll be back stronger next time. I can't thank Aero Bodies enough, Nick Clare Motorsports, PFC Brakes. Just everybody that helps out on that car to make this thing possible. Thank you, guys. Up next for Grant, Tundra Super Late Model Series at Jefferson Speedway on July 17th. Jake Bowman was also at Kern County Raceway for the SRL race in his number 71 Jeremy Doss Pro Late Model. Jake qualified six, ran in the top 10 for the entire race, and finished in fifth. Up next for Jake, he will make his super late model debut at South Sound Speedway with Travis Sharp Racing. Brody Moore was at Madera Speedway for round five of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series where he qualified third and brought home a seventh place finish. Here's what Brody had to say after the race. Hey everyone, we just finished up race number five of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Wilson Motorsports for all the hard work they did getting the car to where it was this weekend. It was the best car I've ever had. Um, we qualified in third position, but unfortunately I drew six in the pill draw. We started six and then the car in front of me on the first start uh, missed the shift. So we fell back, I believe, all the way the second to last, I believe, and we ran as high as fifth in the race. Um, the race was kind of a wreck fest and their system down for, the system was down for um, the time, the my laps is what it's called. Their my laps was down, so we don't know quite where I finished. I believe we finished between anywhere between seventh and tenth, tenth position. Um, but I'd like to thank all of my sponsors, California Partner Association, Valley Insurance Plan, Insurance Risk Manager, Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at Madeira, Ray Space Advancement, Friends of Jacqueline, Wilson Motorsports, Charlie Wilson, my dad, just everybody that supports me. So uh, our next race is July 10th at Colorado National Speedway, so we'll see you then. Up next for Brody, Super Late Models at Colorado National Speedway on July 10th. 
Carter Whalen ended his USAC quarter midget nationals in Toledo by putting two out of three cars in the A main. In heavy Honda, he finished seventh, and in heavy 160, he finished eighth after dealing with a chain coming off twice in that race. In the heavy world formula, he made it to the B main, but was not able to transfer to the A main. Up next for Carter, Atlanta QMA on July 10th. Landon Cox had a successful debut competing in his first USAC national event in Tulsa. In the A main, the young six-year-old took the lead on lap two, then got stuck behind some lap traffic, lost the lead with five to go, and ran out of laps, finishing in second. Up next for Landon, Metro Atlanta QMA on July 10th. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Joey East, who will be at Irwindale Speedway for round three of the Arca Menards West on July 3rd, and Caden Honeycutt will run race number one of the late model stock Virginia Triple Crown at South Boston Speedway on July 3rd. We here at Race Face would like to wish everyone a happy and safe 4th of July as we celebrate Independence Day on Sunday. So make sure to fly your flag proud and be careful if you're going to celebrate with any fireworks. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver Update. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on demand at raceface.tv. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We will be back next week with more from your favorite race face driver. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching.